The Mesozoic, also known as the Age of Dinosaurs, is well known for having produced many titanic animals. This includes the Megatheropods, an informal group of dinosaurs that are the largest terrestrial carnivores the world has ever seen. These fearsome predators dominated the Earth and reached their peak in size roughly 68 million years ago with the emergence of their largest member ever, the Tyrannosaurus rex. Unfortunately, however, just a little while after the arrival of the T-Rex, megatheropods met their demise in the form of a giant asteroid that crashed into the Yucatan Peninsula, eradicating not only them, but also every other non-avian dinosaur on Earth. And although this does sadly mean we cannot see or appreciate these creatures for ourselves, their extinction did make way for many new impressive predators, some of which were exceedingly large in their own right leading many paleontologists to wonder which one is the largest to have lived since the dinosaurs. Many assume that the answer is a mammal, since after all, the Cenozoic, the current geological era, is known as the age of the mammals. However, in reality, the largest land carnivore since the dinosaurs was not a mammal, but rather a giant predatory reptile that prowled prehistoric South America millions of years ago. This was the Barinosuchus. Despite holding such an impressive and important title, the Barinosuchus has remained for the most part under pop culture's radar, which is mainly due to it being a relatively recent find. After all, it was only described 15 years ago in 2007, after an incomplete skull was found in the Parangula formation within the Venezuelan state of Barinas. The paleontologist who unearthed this beast could tell from the get-go that it was gigantic in real life. Yet, it wasn't until a few years later in 2016 that serious attempts to answer the question about its size actually took place. And the results blew many away. As not only did they find it to be the largest terrestrial predator since the T-Rex, but they noted that it still retained this title even when factoring in a margin of error of 50%. Meaning, even if they were way off, the Barinosuchus would still be the Cenozoic's largest land carnivore. The researchers claim that the adult Barinosuchus would have most likely been anywhere from 6 to 7.5 meters, or 20 to 25 feet in length, while weighing a staggering 1.9 tons. More liberal estimates on its size suggest that exceptional individuals may have even reached 9 meters or 30 feet in length. However, as of now, such high numbers seem relatively unlikely. Though, even at its more probable size and weight, the Barinosuchus was still truly a giant being about six times heavier than a tiger and about the same weight as some of the most well-known theropods, such as the average Allosaurus and Baryonyx. Yet, while being similar to these dinosaurs in stature, the Barinosuchus of course looked very different from them, with it essentially having the appearance of a giant, nightmarish land crocodile. This menacing look was a result of the Barinosuchus belonging to a now-extinct family of crocodilomorphs known as the Sebesidae. The members of this group are actually cousins of modern crocodiles and first emerged just before the KT extinction event some 67 million years ago. All members, Barinosuchus included, were both carnivorous and terrestrial in nature, the latter of which is evidenced by their nostrils since they were located on the tips of their snouts rather than the top, suggesting that they spent their days on land. Another development this family experienced is one that played a major role in the deadliness of the Barinosuchus a laterally compressed snout. This may not sound like much, but it was actually this compression that allowed the Barinosuchus to withstand extreme amounts of force while biting into its prey. Along with being able to endure high forces when biting, it is also believed that it could dish out extremely high forces when clamping down, which is thanks to it possessing a titanic and robustly built skull, which possibly reached 3.8 feet or 1.2 meters in length. For many of its hunts, its jaws were probably overkill, but this didn't stop the Brunosuchus from becoming even more deadly as it also had specialized Ziphodon teeth, meaning that they were pointed, serrated, and like its snout, laterally compressed, offering it increased resilience. Its teeth were actually remarkably similar to those seen in many predatory theropods and allowed the Brunosuchus to easily tear through any animal in its environment. However, before it could sink its teeth in, the Brunosuchus had to first catch its prey. And because of its large size, some paleontologists originally believed that it would not have been quick enough to run down prey, in other words, to hunt. It would have instead relied upon ambushes. However, more research into the Brunosuchus and its family have revealed that despite its gargantuan size, it may have actually been quite adept at running. This belief comes from the fact that the Brunosuchus had long legs that appeared to have been fairly adapted for running, 
as well as sporting a knob-like feature on its femur that acted as attachment points or muscles that would have further aided in locomotion. Some paleontologists think that it was even capable of galloping and could use short bursts of speed to run down prey, meaning that nothing was truly safe. This speed, coupled with its deadly bite, made the Burinasuchus a highly efficient killing machine. But not only did it have impressive offense, but its defense was likely nothing to scoff at either, as it likely had some level of osteoderms covering its body, offering it ample protection against attacks, which also meant that its only real threat would have been other Burinasuchus. And this overpoweredness, so to speak, is reflected in the surreal length of the Burinasuchus' reign, as studies on dated rocks have shown that it existed for over 30 million years. This find was made when remains were found dating back all the way from the Middle Eocene and remains were found as recent as the Middle Miocene. These discoveries also showed that it had an impressive range as they were found in Argentina, Venezuela, and Peru. During its existence, these countries and the rest of South America were much hotter than they are today, and the Burinasuchus would have spent its time roaming the sprawling wetlands that peppered the landscape. Due to its extensive rule, this terror would have no doubt lived alongside a plethora of animals. Although, as of now, there is only a short list of co-inhabitants as this is a highly understudied topic. This being said, the list still offers an insight into the diversity of the Burinasuchus' environment and included a variety of mammals such as Adiantoids, Alalmea, Grobiria, Trigonostolops, an unknown Notungulata, Theosodon, Myococylius, Xenostrapotherium, Boreostoma, Pseudoprepotherium, Parapropoli hoploforus, and Amohuacotherium. Additionally, non-mammalian animals were also present, which actually included two other Sebesidae members, the Langstonia and Ilchunia. Like the Brinosuchus, both of these two reptiles were predators. However, neither came close to it in size, and thus were not direct threats or competitors and they may have even needed to fear the true giant of those lands, the Burinasuchus. Sadly, despite the Burinasuchus seemingly having it all, its dynasty eventually did come to an end approximately 11.8 million years ago. While it is not known for certain what caused its demise, the leading idea is that a sharp cooling event known as the Middle Miocene Disruption was the likely culprit. It's speculated that changes in oceanic circulation and a decrease in atmospheric carbon dioxide levels led to this abrupt cooling, which impacted the Burinasuchus' habitat to the point of causing the demise of this Cenozoic King. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, and also feel free to drop some comments on what videos you would like to see next. Until next time, on Extinct Zoo.